Integrate pest uh, management means careful consideration of all available plant protection methods and um, subsequent integration of appropriate measures uh, that discourage the development of populations of harmful organisms and keep the use of um, plant protection products and uh, other forms of intervention to levels that are economically and ecologically justified and reduce or minimize risk to human health and the environment. And why we decided to begin with integrated pest management this season? Because <clears throat> till this year, we uh, applied only chemical uh, protection and we saw that the um, most economically in, important pests, such as Tuta absoluta and Vimizia tabaki, uh, very quickly gained uh, uh, like um, how we call it, um, like uh, pesticides uh, doesn't uh, affect anymore. Um, that's why we uh, decided to apply uh, integrated pest management. Uh, so uh, here you see the methods, some different methods of integrated pest management, which should be applied together. Uh, otherwise, we can't get any result. Uh, what is it? This uh, first identification here on the video, you see. You see uh, the macrolophus on the microscope feeding with Tetranix urticae uh, adults, snails and eggs. And, and one more sample you here see. Uh, this is Bimizia, against Bimizia tabaki beneficial, uh, Ertmasiris eremicus, which emerges from egg uh, at the initial stage. And uh, the next uh, picture is very uh, interesting. It's because when you don't apply any chemicals uh, on the area uh, we work, uh, they develop uh, beneficial fungal uh, spores and they um, like uh, struggle against Bimisia larvae. You see here. And another, uh, the last picture is uh, Bimisia tabaki. Uh, egg, uh, macrolophus is feeding with Bimizia tabaki. Uh, also, the next uh, method is applying the mechanical, chemical, and biological control together. Or the mechanical control, mechanical, mechanical control, which I use here, you see black uh, stickers with pheromone, and then um, yellow ribbons with uh, yellow ribbons against Bimizia tabaki. Today, actually, we will speak about more about Tuta Absoluta control. Uh, on here, in, you see normal, um, simple uh, pheromone um, traps, but here on video, I want to show you my method. Uh, I have never seen actually on any greenhouse. This is um, applying um, black traps uh, without pheromone, only by the perimeter of the greenhouse. And with this method, I touch the absoluta only um, early morning when the when sun rising and uh, the absoluta at uh, different um, and the rest uh, flies uh, like tries to go to the window uh, to go to the light, and then uh, this ribbons catch them. It's a very, really effective method because, especially uh, on the winter, uh, we observe uh, the total damage at the end of the rows, uh, why they are uh, always uh, more warm. And uh, applying this method really helps grower. Uh, the next uh, the next is monitoring here on the graph. You see, uh, this is my table of monitoring. Uh, the um, weak numbers, you see weak numbers uh, on the first line. Uh, the rest is uh, the area where we monitor. And uh, 
that numbers indicate how many uh, bimizia or how many tuta uh, you observed, your workers observed on the traps. Uh, so uh, on the graph, we see um, on which area we have what pace, uh, what pace, on what level we have. Uh, for example, here you can see the um, blue line. This is six hectare left side. Uh, on the left side, we had on a 40, 40th week, we had a maximum amount of to tap saluta. So uh, we uh, identify it uh, on early stage and we can. Um, struggle against it very effectively. Record keeping also included the uh, IPM strategy, which is the record keeping. Probably all agronomists know about it. Uh, this is uh, use uh, of uh, all uh, pesticides. Uh, I mean, uh, not only pesticides, uh, number of traps, um, volume of pesticides, volume of the water we sprayed, on what stage, how many uh, waters, uh, liter waters we sprayed, and the application form uh, dripping uh, or spraying, spraying or fogging or washing ground is included on this table. It helps uh, me uh, to see, like, um, to compare. Uh, different seasons with, um, between the seasons like uh, sometimes I uh, watch the stable um, which um, pesticides are used more uh, than this uh, season let's say and why I always uh, compare them and also uh, here I want to show you chemical pest control of two types saluta which I used uh, last years here in this video, you can see the damage of tuta absoluta, uh, even on the hard uh, chemicals, with applying uh, hard chemicals. Why we couldn't uh, gain this uh, fight? Because um, tuta absoluta life cycle is short and they can very uh, quickly um, uh, reduce. And uh, using pesticides, even different. Um, with different active ingredients can't help us. Uh, they very easily get uh, resistance against a different kind of pesticide. That's why actually um, we switched to IPM and we saw the results. Uh, with this, uh, on the picture, you see that that season uh, was our last season. Uh, that season, our uh, damage fruit uh, percentage was 35. 35 percent of our production was damaged by the capitalism. Yes, uh, here I want to show you very shortly what was our IPM protocol, uh, how many uh, beneficials we introduced and when introduced. Uh, like, oh, at the early stage, as the first introduction, we used just two uh, macrolofts per square meter. Um, and also, uh, six earth materials, it was against Bimizia Tabaki uh, per square meter. And uh, the macro office uh, introduction was just two times, and every time uh, two um, per square meter. Uh, it happened on September. First introduction was on September uh, 9, and the second was on 27th September. September uh, and after two months, we saw a very, really rapid, um, like, increase on the macrolopus uh, population. Uh, actually, I think that it was the effect of the usage of, uh, like, right usage of the feed. Here you see macrolophus. Uh, food, not remark, and uh, actually we didn't use it on the Nutrimac, we mixed it with Artemac. Why we mix it uh, Nutrimac with Artemac? Actually, uh, most agronomists um, use it separately, but uh, we did it because Nutrimac is uh, on a very small uh, box, it's like 50 gram, and uh, 50 gram should be 
applied to approximately one hectare. It's very difficult to um, equally uh, apply it. Uh, that's why we mix it with uh, Artemac and Artemac box is uh, 500 milligram. Uh, so the F, we saw the effect immediately. Here in this video, you can see, well, actually I can't, why I can't show you video. Uh, there is, if you use, uh, watch, uh, okay, I can't. Um, there was the first generation of macrolophis, uh, which we saw only after two, 14 days. <clears throat> also, uh, on IPM strategy, it is uh, very crucial to know which pesticides uh, can be applied with beneficials. Uh, for this, we should use uh, this table, it can be, uh, we used actually bio-based products, uh, it can be corporate, uh, from corporate uh, website and, or another website. Here on the left table, you see active ingredients name uh, and on the right side, you see beneficial's name. Uh, we can here on the left uh, table, we can choose uh, the product what, which we want, uh, which we plan to apply. Let's say abamictin. Uh, if I want to apply abamictin, I have some tetranux urticae, red spider mite, uh, and I want to use it. Uh, I should find out if it's compatible with the beneficials I use in greenhouse or not. Um, I want to show you, actually, this is not uh, compatible. Abamectin is not compatible with this macrolophus and erythematous, but on the small area, 20, it, it was, the area was 250 uh, square meter approximately. And here, here, I want to show you the uh, result of using abamectin against uh, red spider mite, and the result is destroyed plant. Why? Because abamectin kills all macrolocus population there. And we will uh, without weapon, like, like Macrolophus is our soldiers. And uh, we lost all our soldiers there on that area. And Tuta uh, like destroyed all plant there, only on that area. If you um, see the another green plants, it is out of that area. Uh, that area is an exact problem. Uh, it was also uh, like practice for us, it's like experiment for us, uh, using incompatible um, uh, pesticides with beneficials can lead to such problems. Uh, at the end, I want to show you macrolophus population at the end of the season. Uh, I filmed uh, this plant at the very end of the season which, when uh, we planned to begin the liquidation process. Uh, they were a lot. They were like uh, after uh, two months after introduction, it was uh, 15, 18 per square meter, adult, I mean adults. Uh, and uh, on the March, February and March, when uh, sunny day, uh, long, the length of sunny day is increasing, so the population of macros also um, increasing. Uh, and uh, at the end of the season, this number was above 40 uh, per, per square meter. It was uncontrollable. Actually, uh, the um, Increased number uh, of mackerel was also uh, not good for your production. Uh, here you see on the picture, you can see the damage of uh, increased population of mackerel of us. You see, uh, they suck the normal fruit, and uh, there is a sh you can see the spots because of mackerel of us feeding, like. That's why it is very crucial to control both uh, pests and uh, beneficials 
population. If it wasn't uh, the end of the season, actually we sh could use, um, let's say, la laser against it. So we could uh, decrease the population of macrolobus. Yes, that's the uh, end. In conclusion, I want to show you the difference of uh, chemical and biological uh, treated areas. Uh, we have two phase in uh, our greenhouse one, uh, by 10 hectares. In one 10 hectare, we apply chemical control uh, and another uh, on another 10 hectare, we apply biological control. Uh, here you see CCG, it is a chemical controlled greenhouse and biological, biological controlled greenhouse. That's phase one, phase two. Uh, so, uh, on chemical controlled greenhouse, we observed uh, approximately 9% of production, uh, which was damaged by two types of salutopest. But on biological controlled greenhouse, we saw just 4% uh, of uh, damaged production. And the uh, size and shape of uh, fruits, it also differs between this. Uh, different areas, phases, uh, like because you always on chemical controlled greenhouse, you sh always should uh, spray something minimum uh, once in a week. But on biological control greenhouse, uh, macro office do this uh, work instead of us. Uh, that's why the plants on Biological, biological controlled greenhouse um, are not stressed because of pesticide spray. That's why the size and shape is more um, um, better than uh, another side. Uh, also, pesticide residue issue on export. Uh, actually, this is two years that uh, our main uh, um, like our main uh, country, which uh, uh, we export the fruit, is Russia, and uh, there is legislation that they don't accept uh, the pesticide residue products. Uh, that is why it was a really problematic issue for us. So uh, on a biological controlled greenhouse, uh, it was and the product was. Uh, without pesticide residue. So uh, we can, uh, without any problem, export our product. Also on a chemical controlled greenhouse, uh, every day uh, we should uh, maintain spraying machines. We should um, like use a, a additional effort and time for springs. It's a huge work really. Uh, but on uh, another, on biological control greenhouse, we don't use uh, such effort. And also dangerous chemicals used for the environment and health. And on chemical controlled greenhouse, we use really um, dangerous chemicals sometimes, not always, sometimes we uh, are forced to do it, uh, but uh, that's why, uh, that's why on uh, that area, bumblebees um, die uh, on short time, uh, shorter time than on another greenhouse. The, that's why the uh, pollination degree is um, less than the biological controlled greenhouse. Yes like this. If any question, 